Okay. So what I'm going to do here today is continue section 8.4, and that does deal with algebraic thinking. And of course, uh, I pretty much started with uh, the section 8.4 and gotten into, into uh, detail into all of it. But I did start off with the, uh, coordin the Cartesian coordinate system. And in this case, it does consist of two lines. One is horizontal, which is the x-axis, and the other one is vertical, that's the y-axis. And uh, they intersect at a point called the origin. And the two lines separate the plane into four quadrants. So here, you can see how they're labeled, quadrant one, two, three, and four. And also, when we plot points, we always start at the origin. The first order pair is always your x-coordinate. That tells you how many places you need to move either to the left or to the right. And then from there, your second order pair is the y, the second is the y coordinate, meaning you move up or down from the x, and it's going to be parallel to the y axis. Okay. Then we talked about the equations of vertical and horizontal lines. Um, anytime you have x equal to a number, it's always going to your graph will always be vertical. The line will be vertical. And then for y equal to a constant or y equal to a number means that your line, the graph of the line will be horizontal, as you can see. And uh, we looked at a couple of examples. I think, well, just this, the homework example number one, where you had to find the equation of the line that uh, contains a point P with the order pair four, one and perpendicular to the x-axis. Well, if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, that means it's gotta be a vertical line. And it's gonna be x is equal to that constant. And if you, in this case, the x-coordinate is the four, so it has to be x is equal to four. And then the line containing the point negative five, negative five, parallel to the x-axis. That means it's a horizontal line going straight across. Okay, so it's gonna be y equal negative five. Those two I went over at the end of class. So here I'm gonna go ahead and pick up with the equations of lines. Now what you see here, it shows ordered pairs x and y plotted so that the number of the term is the x coordinate and the corresponding term is the y coordinate. And the points do appear to lie in a straight line. So as you can see here, like this graph that's in green, like y equal one half x. Okay. If you were to pick, uh, let's say even numbers for x, like two, one half of two will be one. So that order pair two, one would lie on the graph of y equal one half x and so on. And then for y equal x, that's this line right here. In this case, uh, the x and the y coordinate are the same. That means if x is equal to one, y is equal to one, or if x is equal to negative one, y is equal to negative one. And then for a graph like y equal two x, you can see that it's going to be the x coordinate, whatever your x coordinate is, you're just going to multiply it by two. So if x is one, y is two. And if x is two, y will be four, and so on. So here's what that graph looks like. And then for negative, y equal negative x and y equal negative two x, pretty much the same, but here the graph will be going in this direction from left to right. Okay. Questions about the equations of lines and what they look like. Now, pretty much uh, by looking at these lines here, you can see that they do have something in common, which is the slope. So if you were to deal with the slope here, we're dealing with the measure of its steepness. 
And in real life, things in real life do have a uh, steepness or what they call slope. Mountains, of course, would have slope. Also, uh, what's going to say? Uh, some uh, bridges, some overpasses, and some ramps where handicapped people in wheelchairs use to get inside the buildings. Sometimes they do have what they call slope. Those are just illustrations of what slope is and what it looks like. Okay. Sometimes it can go upward or it can go downward. Okay. Now, and here's some examples. Here's a slope greater than zero. It rises from left to right. A line with a slope of zero is a horizontal line that looks like this. Whereas a slope less than zero means that the line falls from left to right. That means it's negative. Okay. And that uh, vertical line that I showed you earlier, that has undefined slope. Is undefined slope. And I will talk more about that later when we get into finding the slope of a line through two points. Okay. Now, a line with a positive slope, as I mentioned, increases from left to right. Negative slope decreases from left to right. A line with a zero slope is horizontal. Now, for any given value of m, which is the notation we use for slope, the graph of the line y equal mx plus b will be a straight line through zero b. Okay. And it's going to be parallel to the line whose equation is y is equal to m times x. Okay. So you have something like y equal m x, and that's going to be something that you'll see on the next page of your handout. And then if you tack on something like a plus B, then that graph will shift upward or downward from Y equal MX. Okay. And any two parallel lines with the same slope or vertical lines with no slope. Okay. If you have two parallel lines, that means that the slopes are the same. So if you look here, here we got y equal x, y equal x plus two, and y equal x minus two. Notice here that these three graphs are parallel. In other words, they're not intersecting anywhere on that graph. And so that's what we mean by parallel lines. They do not intersect. And when they don't intersect at a point, that means the slope is going to be the same. And for y equal mx plus b, here's the graph of y equal mx. Here's shifted up b places. Okay. Because y equal mx crosses the origin, whereas y equal mx plus b is going to be crossing the y axis at point b. Okay. And we actually call that point where this graph crossed the y axis the y-intercept. Okay. So the point zero B is called the y-intercept. And the value of x at a point of intersection of, of any line with the x-axis is called the x-intercept. So with this line here, y equal mx plus b, here's my x-intercept right here, because it's crossing the x-axis at some point. And if we want to look at these over here on the left, like y equal x minus 2, the x-intercept would be at 2, because y equal x minus 2 crosses the x-axis at 2, whereas it crosses the y-axis, or the y-intercept, it crosses the y-axis at negative 2. And then for y equals x, you can see that the x and the y-intercept are the same. Because this line crosses the x and the y-axis and the y -axis at the origin. 
and for y equal x plus two, here the y-intercept is going to be two, whereas the x-intercept is negative two. Okay. okay. Now there are ways of finding the x and y intercepts of a of any graph that we can write now. All right, so anytime you want to find, let's start with the x intercept. What you'll do there is let y equals zero and solve for x. Let y equals zero and solve for x. Now to find the y-intercept, then you let x equals zero and solve for y. That's how you find the x intercept and the y intercept. We let for the x intercept, you let y equal zero and solve for x. And then for the y intercept, you let x equal zero and solve for y. So, like in homework example number two, then you're going to find the x intercept and the y intercept for the following equations. Starting with part A. Here we got y equal negative three fourths x plus three. And in that problem, I want to find the x intercept and the y intercept. All right, so let's start by finding the x intercept. All right, anytime you want to find the x intercept, you have to let y equal zero and solve for x. So in this case here, I'm going to substitute zero in for y. So this will be zero is equal to negative three fourths x plus three. And then to solve for x, we'll have to first subtract three on both sides. So that means I'm gonna have negative three is equal to negative three fourths x. And then normally we will divide both sides by three, by negative three fourths. But what is the reciprocal of negative three fourths? Oh. Reciprocal. Oh. Not positive. It's still going to be, it's still be negative. But when we flip three fourths over, what will we get? Four thirds. That's what I mean by reciprocal. I'm going to put that negative three over one. Okay. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative four thirds. What's going to happen is you're going to get x by itself because the th negative three is gone and the negative four is gone. You're left with x by itself. So that means here, I'm going to have negative four thirds times negative three over one. 
which is twelve over three, which is open. Okay. So that means this graph of y equal negative three fourths x plus three cross the x axis at four. So as an ordered pair, your x intercept will be or zero. And we have to write the x intercept as an ordered pair because it is a point where the graph crosses the x axis. Now for the y intercept. Now for the y intercept, we can look at, well, we can do two things. You can let x equal zero and solve for y. Okay. So here we can do this, y is equal to negative three fourths. And we're substituting zero in for x. Hello. Yes. I thought that you already figured out x is the point there. <laughs> Putting this back in. Oh, did you just solve for x? And you get x? That's the x intercept. When we did the, when you do the x intercept, you let y equal zero and solve for x, which is what I did here. I put zero in for y. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's your x. That's the point where the graph costs, crosses the x-axis, okay? Because y is, we let y equals zero, and we found out that x is equal to four. So the ordered pair for your x intercept is this, four, zero. So you said that you were solving for y, let x be zero. Yeah. Right. So I thought we just solved for x, and we got four. I, I'm, yeah. I'm confused, I'm sorry. You have, two num you have to have two numbers for intercepts. You have to have an x intercept and a y intercept. That's if you're graphing this on a coordinate plane. And the y intercept is the point where the graph is going to be crossing the y axis. So that's what we're trying to find here by letting x equals zero. Okay. That's the difference between the two. Then, so now in this case, zero times negative three fourths that's zero plus three, and that's going to be equal to three. Okay, so that means that the graph of this line crosses the y axis at three. And the ordered pair for that y intercept is going to be 0, 3. Don't get those confused because x intercept and y intercept are two totally different points. They're totally different. Okay. Questions on part A? All right, now take a look at part B. Here we got uh, y equal negative six. Part B up here. Okay, and let's say I want to find both the x intercept and the y intercept. Now let's think about this for a moment. Y equals to a constant is what type of line?
Yes, yeah, straight line, but what type of line? Horizontal or vertical? Yeah, y equal to a cusp. Mm -hmm. No, horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah. Horizontal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Horizontal line. That means it's going to cross the x axis. So with a horizontal line, would that ever cross the x axis? Well, horizontal line ever cross the x axis? No. no, it would not. So this graph of y equal negative six has no x intercept. So I'm just going to say none. Now for the y intercept, we already said it, it's going to be a horizontal line and it's going to cross the y axis at what number? Negative six. So your y intercept, I'm going to put the order of pairs zero, negative six. Questions on part B. Oh, yeah, if it's horizontal, it's going to cross, it's never going to cross the x axis anywhere. It has no x intercept. But it will cross the y axis at whatever y is equal to. Any other questions? A part C is this y equal 17x minus 34. Y equals 17x minus 34. Let's say I want to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. All right, let's first find the x-intercept. So here we find the x-intercept by letting y equal zero. So we take this equation, substitute zero in for y. So this would be zero is equal to 17x minus 34. Here I'm letting y equal zero. And then we solve this equation for x. All right. So what do I need to do here to get x by itself? Add 34 to both sides. So that means we got 17x is equal to 34. And to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 17. So what's x going to be equal to here? Two. Two. All right, so that means that the graph of this line crosses the x-axis at x is equal to two. So the ordered pair for that x and z would be uh, two zero. We put the x first and then the y second. Okay. Order pair is always going to be x comma y. X goes first, y goes second. Okay. All right. So that's your x intercept. Now for the y intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we let x equals zero and solve for y. Okay. So we take this equation, y equals, and substitute zero in for x. So it'll be y equals 17 times zero minus 34. And here, 17 times zero is zero, so that means Y would have to be equal to negative 34. Okay. So the y intercept 
four, the graph of this line will be the ordered pair. I'm going to put this on top. Zero, negative 34. Okay. Questions about the uh, example two. And do not get those confused with x intercept and y intercept. x intercept has the x coordinate with zero. The y intercept has a uh, order pair zero with whatever y is. There are two totally different points. And in fact, it does take two points to create a the graph of the line. Questions? Okay. So we will move on to the next thing. Where every line has an equation of the form y equals mx plus b, either y equal mx plus b, or x is equal to some constant a. m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And any equation that can be put in one of these forms is called a linear equation. Okay, now what I've done here is provided some graphs here where we're going to sketch the graph for each of the following equations. And of course, there are you know many ways of uh, coming up with uh, ordered pairs for your graphs. One, of course, which we just did was like the uh, intercepts. One, you can use uh, the factor slope intercept form to solve, to graph a linear equation, or the traditional point plotting method can also be used to uh, graph linear equations. So uh, let's start with uh, part A. We got y equal negative six fifths x plus six. Y equal negative six fifths X plus six. And here we're going to sketch the graph of this. Now, if you want to, you can, like we just did in that last example, come up with X intercept, your X intercept and your Y intercept and plot those on the coordinate plane. All right, let's try that. So if I want to find the x-intercept here, we just let y equals zero and solve for x. So in this equation, I'm going to substitute zero in for the y. So this will be zero is equal to negative six-fifths x plus six. and then solve this equation for x. So to do that, I need to subtract six on both sides. So it'd be negative six is equal to negative six fifths x. And what's the reciprocal of negative six fifths? Negative five over six. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative five, six. And of course, you'll see that the negative five and five and negative six and six cancel. Negative times negative is a positive. So that means this is x. And of course, negative times negative is a positive. But if you divide out these sixes here, you're going to be left with five. So 
oh, that graph will be crossing the y-axis at, uh, I mean, the x-axis at five. So the actual ordered pair for that x-intercept would be five, zero. That's the x-intercept. And now for the y-intercept. That's where we let x equal zero. So we substitute zero in for x in this equation and solve for y. This will be zero, so this will be zero plus six, which means y is equal to six. So the ordered pair for that y-intercept would be zero of six. Because we let x be zero, so the zero comes first, the y comes next. So these are my two intercepts here. The x-intercept is five, zero, and the y-intercept is Zero six. Negative times negative. Right. When you multiply two negatives, it is always going to be positive. I guess I missed the six. Thirty over six, which will be five. Negative five times negative six, that would be 30 over six times one, which will be six. 30 over six will be five. Yeah, I just did some cross divide, not, you know, with this. All right, so those are the only two points we need. And in fact, it only takes two points. Graph a line. And some textbooks will say use a third point as a check. So here my y, uh, my x intercept is at five zero. So on the x-axis, I go to the right five, and I stay on the x-axis, draw the point. And then zero, six, stay at zero, but go up six on the y-axis. So all we need to do there is just connect these two points. And that would be the graph of that line, y equal negative six fifths x plus six. Now that's one way you could do that problem. There are other ways like identifying the slope and the y-intercept since this equation is written in the form y equal mx plus b. And in this case, your m, that's the coefficient of your x term, is your slope. In this case, negative six fifths. The b is the y intercept. That's a number added to or subtracted from. That would be six. Okay. And the way you could have plotted that using the slope and the y intercept would be to first plot the y intercept, which is six, which will be this point here. Now to come up with the other point, you have to look at your slope of negative six fifths. Now that negative six fifths, this is where we have to use something called rise over run because that's what slope means, rise divided by run. 
the numerator tells you how many places you need to move up or down from the uh, y-intercept. The denominator tells you how many places you need to move to the left or to the right. So here, if you were to look at this, you'll be going down six and to the right five. So starting from that y-intercept of zero, six, you have to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then to the right, one, two, three, four, five. There's the other point right there. And you'll connect those two points and you'll have the graph of the equation y equal negative six fifths x plus six. Now that only works if it's in the form of y equal mx plus b. Questions on part A. All right, take a look at part B. Here we got y is equal to negative four. With that one, what type of line would that be? Here's a horizontal line. And it's going to be crossing the y axis at what y value? Negative four. Okay. So for this, that would be the line y equal negative four. Now you could create an x a table of values for that. I'll say something like this. I can pick any value of x, like negative one, I'll say two, and then four, but the y has to be equal to negative four. So for every x value I pick here, the y coordinate must be negative four because it says y equals negative four. And I can plot those three points on the coordinate plane. Pretty much you're going to see that negative one, negative four would be here. And two, negative four. And four, negative four. They're all going to follow on the same line. And it will be a horizontal line. Okay, so that's how we graph y equals negative four. Right, questions on part D. Okay, and part C. All right, part C is y equal two x plus four. Of course, in many ways, you can do this problem as well. Of course. Of course, if you'd like to, you can go ahead and create a table of values for X and Y, and then just select values of X. Like for X is equal to zero. Just substitute zero in for X. So two times zero is zero. Zero plus four would be four. So one ordered pair would be zero, four. Let's say that x is equal to two. Uh, 
better than that. Let's try one. On the graphs that I gave you, it might work, but the one I have up here on the board won't. Let's say for x equals one. Two times one will be two. Two plus four is six. So one ordered pair will be one six. And I'll do a negative x value like negative one. A positive four. Two times negative one. Negative two plus four is two. So the other order, order pair would be one negative two. I mean negative, negative one, two. All right, so now plot those on the coordinate plane. Start with zero, four, that's on the y-axis. One, six will be to the right, one and up six. And negative one, two will be to the left, one and up two. So pretty much those three points form a straight line. That's to graph the equation y equal 2x plus 4. Okay. Any questions about drafting uh, linear equations? So let's, let me go back here. And then we'll look at uh, how to determine the slope of a line. All right, determining the slope of a line is this. You're given two points, A and B, where A is going to have the coordinates x1, y1, and B will have the coordinates x2, y2. With the fact that x1 and x2 are not equal to each other, that means these x coordinates can't be equal to each other. The slope, which is going to be M of the line through the point through A and B is going to be this formula. M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. In other words, it's going to be the change in your Y coordinates from Y2 to Y1 divided by the change in your X coordinates from X2 to X1. And here's an illustration of just that right here. You have a straight line from X1 to X2, that difference represents the run. And this vertical change right here from Y2 to Y1, that represents the rise, okay? And I did mention something about rise over run. That's what the slope is, a ratio of the rise, the change in your Y values over the run, the change in your X values. Okay. So here's a few examples that we'll look at here dealing with rise over run, or just finding the slope of a line through two points. So let's start with uh, number four. Here we're going to find the slope of the line through the pairs of points using the slope formula. Negative eight, negative five, and negative one, negative two. So here we're going to use that slope formula, m is equal to y2 minus y1 
and the whole thing is divided by x2 minus x1. And the way we identify what x1, y1 is and what x2, y2 will be is this. Here's my first order of pair, eight, negative eight, negative five. X1 will be negative eight, y1 will be negative five. My second order of pair is negative one, negative two. X2 will be negative one, y2 will be negative two. That is if this helps. All right, so now y2 minus y1, in this case, that's negative two minus negative five. Y2 minus y1, negative two minus negative five. That's divided by x2 minus x1. That's negative one minus negative eight. And now we're going to simplify the numerator and the denominator. What is uh, negative two to negative two minus negative five? And negative one minus a negative eight. That'd be seven. All right, and we'll leave that as a simplified fraction. So three sevenths is the slope of the line that passes through those two points. Questions on that example? Okay. Now take a look at uh, number five. For each of the following, we're going to write the equation on the line determined by the given pairs of points in slope intercept form or in the form x equals a or y is equal to b. So here's part a. Negative three, one, and four, negative six. And here we want to find the slope of that line going through those two points and then write the equation. Because okay. that's the first thing you have to do there to find out what the slope is using that slope formula. And in this case, for that first order pair, x1 will be negative 3, y1 will be 1. For the second order pair, x2 is 4, and y2 is negative 6. So here, y2 minus y1, that's negative 6 minus 1, divided by x2 minus x1, 4 minus negative 3. Oh, x1, y1, and then x2, y2. Maybe if I could put that in red. Sometimes it's hard to see from a distance with the colors that you're using. Okay. All right, so now this, what's a negative six minus one? Negative seven, and then four minus a negative three. Seven. seven. Se negative seven divided by seven. Negative one. So here your slope is gonna be negative one. Okay. Now we need to uh, write the equation. Okay, now, 
What we're going to do here is use what they call the slope intercept form, which is, of course, y is equal to mx plus b. We already found out that the slope was negative one. So here, I'm going to use the slope of negative one. And I'm also going to use, I can use either one of these two points here. So in this case, I'm going to use negative three, neg negative three, one. Okay. I could use four, negative six if I want to. Now, in this case, see your x is negative three and your y is going to be one. I'm going to substitute x, y, and m into this slope intercept form because I want to find out what that y intercept will be. And then for my final answer, I would only substitute the slope and the y intercept in. Okay, so y will be equal to, now here the y is going to be one. So be one is equal to m, which is your slope, negative one times x, which is negative three plus b. And then simplify here, one is equal to negative one times negative three, positive three. So that three plus b is equal to one. Now to solve for b, I'm adding three, so I need to subtract three. And what is one minus three? Negative two. So that's my y intercept for this equation. All right. Since I have the slope of negative one and the y intercept of negative two, here's the equation. And of course, the slope intercept form is that y equals mx plus b. So all I'm going to do there is just substitute the m with that negative one. So be y is equal to negative one x plus the b negative two. Okay. Same thing, same formula, y equals mx or b. Yeah. And all I'm going to do is substitute the m and what b is to get the equation in slope in the set form. Okay. Now, let me simplify this a bit. Negative one times x, I can just say negative x plus a negative two is the same as saying minus two. That would be the equation of that line passing through those two points, three negative, negative three, one and four, negative six. Questions on part A. I know that's going to be a lot to uh, try to digest through, but yeah. let me go ahead and do part B. Because notice one of the order pairs is zero, zero. That's going to help a lot when I come up with the equation on the line going through those two points zero, zero, and or five. Zero, zero, and four, five. So in this case here, x1 will be zero, y1 will be zero, x2 will be four, and y2 will be five. So the slope there will be, of course, y2 minus y1, all divided by x2 minus x1. Or y2 minus y1, that's 5 minus 0. Divided by x2 minus x1, 4 minus 0. Or 5 minus 0 is 5. 
and four minus zero is four. So the slope of that line going through those two points will be five fourths. And now to come up with the equation, we use the y equal mx plus b. Now my slope is five fourths, so I'm gonna use the slope of five fourths. And you know what? Since one of my ordered pairs is the origin, zero, zero, that would be the best ordered pair to use here to come up with the equation of the line. So I use zero, zero. And what's gonna happen here is this, x is zero, y is zero. If I substitute the y with the zero, I'm gonna have zero is equal to, m is the slope, five fourths, times x, which is also zero, plus b. So this is zero is equal to five fourths times zero is zero, plus the b is just gonna be b. So guess what your y-intercept is gonna be? Yeah, that's the equation, okay? Because if you were to use this, that means y is equal to your slope of five fourths x, well, plus zero, but that will end up with g, y equal five fourths x as the final answer. Questions on part D. Okay. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here for now.